Welcome back to Norath. We're starting off in Quainos today because we have a few updates in the city to take a look at. And then we're going to be taking a boat from the docks and head over to Arutan to take a look at the new Great Library building. As well as a few things along the way. And the first thing I want to show you that I've been working on over here in Quainos is I'm trying to start laying out the road network for Quainos. This is just temporary until I get the positions of the roads and their various sizes laid out. As you can see in typical Roman format, we are going for a grid and I'm trying to make the sizes about appropriate so I can fit in a good number of houses but also have a fair number of streets inside the city. We kind of have to strike a balance of that along here, I think. As you can see, we have our main thoroughfares that you're familiar with, and branching off from those around here on this side and that side of the colonnades, we have roadways that will come off from those. Of course, the smaller five block roadways here are going to be for residential buildings. I think we're going to have some fine Roman residences in these areas around here. And there should be many interesting things we will have to explore over time as we build out the streets of Quainos. I think we definitely need to, at some point, name the streets. I think, because we have a Roman style here, we should probably name the main road that comes in from the gate here. This should be the Cardo. And this street over here, of course, would be the Decumanus which leads us to the main cathedral square, which, as you can see, I have done a bit of work on. I've added the, the pattern and the compass star here in the middle. I've also dropped in the fountain here as well. And I've done some work on the palace facade back over here. As you can see, we have some lion statues and some lit stone braziers. Some soldier statues and monuments up here on columns. And of course we have some trees and some uh, redstone automatic street lights as well. I've also begun to decorate what will be the cathedral here whenever I put that in. That's not going to be for several episodes. I still have a lot of work to do on that. Probably at least a month or so of work to do on that. Uh, I have also added another curious granite obelisk over here, like the one we have in the harbor. Hmm. I really wonder what distant land those are coming from. We definitely have to find that out someday. Of course, here we have our Colosseum, or our amphitheater. And over here, I have added a bit more detail on this courtyard. I have put in, in front of another entrance to the cathedral, that's going to be over here, a side entrance. From this gateway, I have put in another colonnade. And it goes straight to a triumphal arch over here. With the equestrian statue on top of it and some... Soldier statues flanking either side of that as well. But that is about all there is to see in Quainos for this episode. I will give you a good view of the street plan along here. I think I want to work in some diagonals like this when possible. The Colosseum here kind of made this diagonal necessary. It kind of wraps around in an odd way. But most of the other streets are, of course, regularly laid out. And there are some areas here also for probably warehouses and shops in the docks district as well. And before we leave, I want to give you another quick look at the Colossus over here. I have done a little bit more work on this. This is going to be a, another long project to get done. I have added some coloring for the rest of the helmet. I have also started to draw in what will be 
the uh, armored breastplate around here. I've put in a, a model for the belt around it, and I'm working on drawing in, as you can see, the sides of what is going to be the breastplate. I've also added in one bracer over here on the arm that's holding up the uh, diamond-tipped war javelin it's holding. But it's going to be, as I said, quite a while to get that done because I have to re-sculpt this subtly as I go along. So it's going to take a bit of effort to do. Now you can also see along here I have added some tentative models for eagle statues. I didn't want to have all soldier statues like that one over there. We need to mix it up when possible. So that is what this here is. I'll give you a good look at it. Of course it's uh, symmetrical on both sides. And we had to have a good eagle statue around here somewhere. So now that you've been brought up to speed on everything that's happened in Koinos, let's go down here and take a boat and head off over the ocean because we have somewhere to go. And we need to head roughly uh, in this direction over here, I think. That should take us to the island of Erud's Crossing, which I posted this on Instagram quite a while ago. But I now want to show it to you in video and stop off there and so we can see everything that's happening there. Of course, this island is pretty much a outpost of the Erudite Kingdom, and it is pretty much just a fishing village. I think it's one of their most distant villages, but as you can see, it is done in the Asian style that I have chosen to use for Erudin. And as we get a little bit closer, we can see the peak of the island of Erud's Crossing, the palm trees, the docks, and the houses. And, of course, the main tower here. And I wanted to take the boat and go the long way to show you that when you come here, you can boat around in this area around here. And if you head through this archway right here, you will find that there is a small lagoon here that you can dock your boat in. And we will come around this way here. Disembark from our boat, and we have arrived at Erud's Crossing. This is, of course, a peaceful fishing village. It's not quite done in its details, but it's about half done, I would say. And if we go in some of the houses, we will see that they are pretty much move-in ready. You would just have to uh, set up shop in here with your chest and everything. But otherwise, they are ready to be populated. So when you come to Norath, if you want to set up shop on this island, it is ready for you to do so. There is even a nice dragon fountain here providing cool, fresh water for you below this um, octagonal pavilion here. And you can also go inside the main watchtower. It's got a piston door in it. It is undecorated, but it is structurally complete. So I will go up the ladder here and give you a good view of all the rooms that you have if you would prefer to live in this section of the city. It's got quite a few rooms to it. I think this is about as far up as we can go. Well, almost. The tower here has various balconies that you can view both the island and the sea from on all its four sides. Should be a nice, peaceful place if you want to set up a base here. I think in the future I want to put maybe a little pavilion on 
maybe a shoulder of the mountain up here and have some twisty, turny pathways to get up there. I think around the back there should also be a cave put on the island as well at some point. These are just uh, ideas I'm thinking about for the future. If you have ideas for the island of Air Roots Crossing, you can let me know. For the rest of today, I think we will leave the boat behind and head to the coastland of the continent of Otis because there are a few more things around here to take a look at. Most notably, what I want to show you is we have more towers, and these are going to be locations for smaller villages that I want to build at some point in the future. As you will notice here, they are situated along the road network. So if we follow that around here, in the distance over here, we have another coastal village. I imagine this would also be a, a fishing village. But since it has more land around here, there are going to be more farms here, like I have in the Common Lands Valley at some point. So they will be sort of combination farming and fishing villages. Over here, we have another village that we're going to put over the deep water lake around here. And there is yet another one that will be a very small village. It may not even be a village. This might be just a watchtower that looks out over the barren coast around here, because as you can see, it is, it is quite barren. And there is not much going on, so the kingdom of the Erudites pretty much stops around here because they don't bother extending themselves down into the barren coast since there is pretty much um, nothing to do down there except fight things. So let's head back northwards over the deep water lake here with the Stonebrunt Mountains on our left, and we will head to the city of Arudin itself to finish up today's episode. And as you can see here, this is yet another location on the Deepwater Lake that we're going to have a village situated at as well. So here we are at the high city of Arudin. We're outside the walls here. There are guardian lion statues on either side. And I haven't set them up yet, but what I want to do around here is have teleport platforms instead of trying to put piston doorways in the gateway here. I think that it would be good to have. It's sort of an analog to the teleport platforms that we have going on in Felwyth. However, let's come around here and land and go, I think, around here. Because, at long last, I have been teasing this for a while, I want to show you the Great Library of Erudin. And this building is actually modeled on a real-life structure. I believe it is the Ming Dynasty Temple of Heaven building. Some of you may immediately recognize this. A cool thing about this building is that it looks very different depending on what height you view it at, also how far back. Like if we view it from here, it's kind of hard to see that there's much up there at all. But if we raise our height a little bit, we can see that there are three distinct tiers to it. If we raise our height a little bit more, we can see that these are actually roof segments. And if we raise our height a little bit more still, we can see that we have a fine pinnacle on the top of the building. And that the sort of three-tiered round building itself almost looks like a large funny hat, I suppose. But this is one of those big challenging structures I've always wanted to build in Minecraft. And I think it's been a couple of months ago now that I did actually construct this here. And as you can see from the top here, if we look down on it, it looks nothing like what it looked like from below when we were looking at it a moment ago. So let me drop down here. And you can see on the way down how different the building looks. 
from various altitudes. Of course, since it is a round building, it looks the same from every side that you view it from. Of course, I do have four entrances on this, but currently there is nothing on the interior. This is something I still have to build. But I will go along here and show you all the intricate detail that I had to do with all of the stairs and half slabs of everything to replicate the very complex way Asian structures of this type are put together. So I'll try and give you a view of the underside here. We have just a lot of very complicated woodwork on this level and sort of the same style of woodwork on this level here and also the topmost level around here also. And there's the curve of the top roof up here. And it is also at this point that we reach the height limit. We can go no higher than this. And from here, we can also get a good vantage point on the entire city of Arudin itself, actually. I should make another teleport that goes all the way up here. This is so nice. But we can see the Imperial Palace over there, a bit of the lighthouse over there, and the Stonebrunt Mountains and the temple over there, and I think uh, probably the bank building will be over there. And you can also see along the edges of the walls something that I have been doing in Freeport. I have come over here to Erudin, and I have been doing the same sort of thing, although I haven't finished it. But let's go have, over here and take a look at it. These are, of course, uh, the first level of layout that I'm going to have for housing designs. They're going to be multiple stories tall. I'm just starting out with two stories to get the setbacks from the streets correct because I wanted them to be sort of different and not like each other. I didn't want them to be all flat against the street. I wanted to have a little bit of layout here and there so we can sneak in trees and everything along in those sections where we will have some room to do so. We have some more houses along here. And of course, they all have varying setbacks from the road, but they all, has, all also have various interior widths on the inside here as well. But they do all have a common plan. And of course, there will be doors and windows and everything eventually. I'll be going along and detailing those in due time. But this is just, as I've said, getting the first pass through because we will need to make uh, multiple passes to get all the housing done. I have actually left the reference models I was using to copy and paste in the housing structures over here. I've also started to put in a gateway to get into the Imperial Palace. From the gateway back here, we will have these ascending steps. And as you go up those, the palace itself is slowly revealed. And I think out here we need to have various gardens and pools of water and statues and interesting things around here in the future as well. And while I'm over here, I will show you off in the distance. There is a, a quarter of the Great Library over here that I will show you. As I said, there's not too much to see inside of it because it is currently just a shell. There's going to be a lot of work to fill that out with books and everything. So let's say project for the future. But on the inside, you can tell that I am going to be putting in some, I think, some pillars in probably two tiers with a central dome on the top up there as well. I think that would make a, a nice library building. And as I'm sure you know by now, Norath is a super long-term project, so I will, of course, be updating you periodically in these videos with additions I make here and there all over the map because we are currently now building, I think, a total of five main cities with many other things besides that to come. 
And one last thing I want to show you over here today that I kind of flew over it and didn't talk about it. This little pool of water that I made, I'm also in the process of trying to put some detail into it. And I thought perhaps some lily pads would look nice floating on the water, especially with the shaders. I'm also trying out putting some water plants in here with pretty much flowers in pots. I don't know if that looks too out of place or if it looks okay. Let me know what you think about that. I definitely think we're going with the lily pads. But I didn't know what else to put around here because I did want to put some flowers floating along there as well. In order to give the impression that some of the lily pads are actually blooming. But one of the things I really do want to add in these little spaces around here, these little grass spaces here and over here and in various areas of the city that don't have buildings in them, I want to fill them with uh, lush gardens. Or rather, I mean, as, as lush as we can make things appear in Minecraft. Because we do kind of have some limits on that front. But with uh, my texture pack and everything, we will do what we can. Speaking of my texture pack, many of you have been asking about this for quite a while. So today, I am providing for the first time, there's a link in the video description that you can download the texture pack here I am using. Now this pack only works for Java 1.12.2, by the way. So if you're playing in newer versions, you will have to update it yourself. And there's also another link farther down that will take you to the Silder shaders for 1.12.2 if you want to install those so you can see the world here exactly as I do. And one last announcement I want to say for those of you that watch to the end of my videos, thank you. Version 1.2 of Norath is coming out in episode 30, which will be the very next episode you see after this one, which I'm planning to release on Saturday, the 24th of October. And episode 30 will also be a recap of the last 29 episodes, so everyone can get caught up and up to speed, and we can see the long journey that we have taken from, I think it's been over a year ago, since I put out the, the first episode of Building Norath. So for those of you that have been watching since then, thank you very, very much. And those of you that are new, I am happy to have you. We have a long way to go ahead of us still. And with that, we are also out of time for today. So I wanted to thank you very, very much for watching. And I will see you next time.